What Paul here is alluding to is your opportunity to kill that part of you which you are no longer in agreement with through your repentance. In the natural, you don't have the power and the capacity to do so. Because it's going to speak about a law that's in operation. But through baptism, you do. I honestly feel just, <laughs> it sounds very crazy, but as you have an overdose of happiness, I just feel very, very buzzy for um, the baptism that I just done. I, I was baptized for eight years, um, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, but there was something missing and um, I was running empty. And. Um, my sister actually told me a while back that I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus because in the Bible it says that and we were going in forwards and backwards and we were arguing but it says this but it doesn't say that um, and anyway scrolling going forward I did um, come across HOI and got a lot more understanding I got a lot more um, truth from the Bible and complete um, teaching of what the word says and um, although I'm a very stubborn person generally, I felt like it's something that I need to do. Um, I really submitted to it and I do think that I've been called to do this. Um, today is a special day because my daughter's done it with me as well. We wanted to do it for a while. And uh, although there's a battle in the spirit always when you want to do something like this, um, we have done it. So expressly, I had a vision over a year ago regarding strongly on baptism. And I just passively pushed it on the side. I'm like, oh, who baptizes in UK? Why would you even get someone baptized? And lo and behold, about a month ago, I came up on this TikTok channel um, page where I met the Apostle Marcos um, Da Costa, not even knowing his name, but I was just stuck on that live front stream, stream, stream. And the Holy Spirit just kept me there. And I kept coming back. And on that same day, He prayed for me. That instant, when I got off that, that live stream, the Spirit of God began to minister to me, reminding me exactly of that dream of a, a vision that I had had on baptism, myself and my two sons in water. But I had no clarity. I didn't even remember it again. So since I started following his teachings, that vision kept reopening. It kept reminding me and it was pointing to me that this is, is going to happen. But I wasn't sure how, because this is someone you're seeing on, on screen. You don't even know him. and. Openly, he starts talking about baptism. You have to register on the page. And that is how I went ahead. I did immediately. And on that same day, the Lord, he gave me the grace to, to, to sow into the ministry, even though I didn't have much. Just said, put in that for the work he's doing. 
and I don't think he knows about that, but I did. I just went ahead and did that quietly for Miss You to pinch on a paper. So the next thing I know, we have to keep, I keep watching him and he gave us the link to, you know, be on Zoom. He quickly replied my emails, responded, and every time there is this baptism program playing over and over, and I began to speak to the boys. I told them, we guys are about to get immersed, you're about to be baptized. And my, I remember telling my son about this vision, those, that moment it happened. I always share it with them because we do morning devotions. I've really been seeking the Lord, seeking to know Him in my own, you know, corner. And many things have happened to us until when I met um, Apostle, a lot of clarity began to come up, a lot of visions that were, you know, in the dark, and all of these things that have been going on with me. And the Lord said that baptism is what he, he has, that is the, the face which he is bringing me to. I need to get that done. And lo and behold, just to cut the long testimony short, yesterday, over two weeks before now, I've been really wanting to be at this program of today, which is the 12th of May, 2024. Two or three days before today, there's so many battles, the other voice of the enemy, the adversary, tells me, you are not supposed to go, don't go, don't go. I almost gave up. I told the son, my sons that were not coming anymore. And at the last minute yesterday, I booked a ticket one way because I wrote to him, I told him that it's hard for me. I mean, and he didn't even see my mail. And I went ahead, the enemy uses that as an ally, alibi to tell me, oh, he's not even responding. That is not the will of God. Don't even bother. The Lord said, the only important thing is for you to be there. Just be present at that bay. And lo and behold, I took that one-way ticket. I took faith. I paid. Seek, searching for hotels, none of it was available. No availability at all. No rooms, no, nothing. No inns. And if they were, they were dates that we should have been back in a... Dudley, this is me traveling all the way from Dudley yesterday. The battle between my sons at home, they were, they began to be so squabbly and, you know, so on strife, terrible. I had to just like, these are signs that we shouldn't go anywhere. You know, they are not even getting along before we are getting, getting there. What happens when, when we get there? We don't even know where we're going to stay and sleep and all of that. I took the leap of faith. The Lord began to remind me how he, he, he had met the woman by the well. If she was just at the well, she had to just be at the well. Why he must have to come through that well, because he had to meet her. That's the testimony, and I took on that scripture. Yesterday morning, a lady friend called me just to cut the testimony short, and I had to travel in the afternoon. She had to invite me to the church because they haven't seen me in the church since I prayed with him. He had told me, you have to stop going to all of these churches and focus on what God is doing with you at this time. And she invited me yesterday for today that I had to be there. I needed to be there and all of that. I ended up praying with her on the phone. And that's when the Lord ministered to me that um, John chapter 4. Then on that, I moved now to preparing to come in the afternoon. This time I've not even booked a ticket yet. This is about midday in the afternoon. And after I dropped from that call, I made sure I accept, I told her that we're not coming. I'm not going to be in church, in that service, even today, because I've not been seeing me for a while, for two weeks now. And then today I had to come. I had to be there as they wanted, but I said I would, I have to travel. It is eminent that I travel because I don't want to tell them everything I'm doing because, you know, it's just to be on the wise wisdom. Then I drop the call and I come. I get on the on the booking. Immediately I started booking. Then we now plan to leave the house. Then we left the house, traveling to Birmingham. My sons are on each other. They are fighting nonstop. We get on the, on the, on the, on the coach. We even canceled that coach because it was too close to getting here because I know there's no accommodation. So I want to get here as late as possible. So there was a last option of reaching here, which is at 2 a.m. 
that's the only possible one so we can wait maybe three hours and the sun comes up then we can just find ourselves at this bay that's just for being here so that is what i'm working on i'm like okay lord have your way you have you're in control holy spirit i'm all yours and we are on that coach coming we transit in london waited for almost two hours back and forth we met a strange woman who get my gave my son a bottle of water and the Spirit of God ministers, she covers her hair in a strange way. I don't know why he's telling me to say all of this. He says, we've turned the water to her. I gave her back the water, a bottle of water. And she's saying she's there for a special purpose. She's there for some reason. She gave the water to my son to drink at the station while we were waiting for the bus to Canterbury. So that's how I returned this, this um, water to this woman. Then we get on the next um, midnight. That's our time for leaving to the coach to come here. Then getting here, we arrive here at 6 past 2 a.m. at the University of, of Kent. We come off the, the university um, area. We don't have a place to go. Spirit of God ministers to me, go to McDonald's, which is 24 hours. And I begin to arrange to get to McDonald's. Getting to McDonald's, the boss man, thank you Lord. We get on the bus, the boss man gives us a tour for over an hour. This is almost 3 a.m. in the morning, more than 3 a.m. He didn't charge us to pay anything on that bus, midnight bus. He's carrying all of the students. He's patient enough to take us to the place where we have to get off in the sound town center. After about an hour, you know, touring with us, taking everybody to their own destination and we're the last people on the bus. He drops us off and then we come off. It shows off where my McDonald's is. We went there, we met. We're standing there just finding a place to sit because we know McDonald's is 24 hours. Just to sit down, there was no place to sit down because there's so many hoodlums, all of this strange, you know, how it is. And I'm telling the Lord that this is not why you brought us here. This is a retreat. You said this is a promise that I will come and relax and just be in your presence. What am I doing here in this midst of all of this? You know, you know what Saturday night can be. <laughs> you know, Lord, do something. And this is me just speaking and my sons are next to me, they know when I'm praying and I'm talking to him. And the next thing I know, a man walks up to me. Three of the securities, they come up to me and they're so concerned. I don't have to be here at this hour. She wants to, he wants, do I need to get some food? I'm like, no, like food was just not the thing we would have to. Okay, he wants to take me somewhere that I can wait at. He took us down to Travel Lodge to show us, he, walked, he left his post. Excuse himself, himself from his um, colleagues, take us to the place of wait, to across the street, across the traffic. This, I can't just, I must say this in detail because it's just too awesome, it's too wonderful. He takes us across the, 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 the streets and walks us all the way. I can't imagine, I'm like, are you not supposed to go back to your place of work? He insists that mama. This is a young man almost, you know, I can't be his mom, but he's just giving me all that respect. He works with me. He just feels like he should do this, you know, he's compelled to. And he takes us across all the way to that place and he patiently walks us through the dark path under some, which points us to a tunnel. My goodness. I'm like, are we supposed to walk all of this this night? But that is the way that he himself, the Lord began to remind me, this is how he ought to walk all the way to the bank of Jordan to be baptized that this is me paying the price of whatever it is that I'm, I'm, he has called me here to do so we got there and as I stood at that gate in front of travel lodge he said we we're going to ring the bell somebody will open for us that's what the man who brought us there told us you ring and somebody will open just wait if they don't open you go cross across uh, cross over to the other side which is um, premier inn hotel and I'm standing there trying to cling. I rang twice, they didn't open. My son is like, oh, mom, let's go. You know, in this place, there's nobody. They're not going to open. Yeah, I just said it. The silent voice said, patience, patience. This is like 10 minutes. You can you imagine how dark it is? And we're just insisting there. The next thing I know, a woman is coming out that rushing her to the ambulance from the hotel from inside. She had an injury. She had, she's dripping of blood and all of that. This is what we got to see yesterday. And I'm now concerned, you know, the compassionate spirit inside of me. I'm feeling for her, I'm like, should I pray for her? What should I do? You know, I start feeling this thing inside to just do something. 
The next thing, <laughs> the Lord says, go inside. The Spirit says, go inside. That's the door for you to go inside. So they now they have concern. They are carrying her to the ambulance. I cross. We go inside with the sons. Nobody stopped us. We just went into the travel lodge gate. And we went into the lobby, into the waiting. There was no one there. I just stood there. I'm like, what next? It's like I could feel the presence of the supernatural presence of the Lord. The God, heaven is real. The Lord is, the angelic hosts were just there. I could just feel like this is why he asked me to be here. And it is backing by his presence and everything is arranged by him. And the next thing I noticed, the, 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 what's his name? The, the guy comes in, the receptionist, he comes and he's telling us, we can't sit here, there is no allowance for them, there's no such, um, you know, um, space for them to keep somebody to wait because they have to close and there's no one that sits here anymore. They close this area. Then he disappears for like five minutes. Then I see he comes out with a key and all of this notice written up that he doesn't know what happens to what happened to him, but he just feels that he should give me a room to stay me and the boys. I said, what? He said, this is my key. And this is the number. 212. Go upstairs and rest. <laughs> I said, what did you say? He said, this is your key. What's your name? He told me his name. I think it's Ra Rafira or something like that. <sighs> that just humbled me. I'm like, okay, now it shows that this is all in your hands. Because I told him that we're here for a baptism. My sons need to get baptized. We don't even know where we are. This is our first time here. And we tried booking even their hotel. There was no room. But he came out that he doesn't know this has never happened to him. He's giving me a room to stay. And we went into the room, elaborate, wonderful. Then this morning, when I saw the um, man of God's um, message, I saw that he had written to us because I was trying to reply, get his reply from yesterday that we're on our way because he asked me to keep him posted on our trip as we're coming. So I kept him posted, but somehow he didn't see it. So I, be, I became, I began to murmur, you know? <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, you're murmuring. I began to say, he's not responding. You know, the enemy is now using that, like you should give up and just leave the gate and go go back and just wait at McDonald's. This is not even going to happen. How do you even get there? What is a bay? How do you even know? No, it's nobody there to wait for you, to, to receive you. Wow. All of these voices were speaking at the same time. Then the moment I saw his message, something just leaped in my spirit. And he said, he had written in the message that for all your effort, for every sacrifice you've made to get here, the Lord rewards you and your children. The Holy Spirit took me to that night. This morning when I was, you know, just meditating, when I woke up, I saw the message as I put on my phone. I said, ah, he has written finally. Writing on this day, this is I've written to him three days ago. He's only seen it now. And he has written with a, with a, you know, with an anointing in the prayer. And he took me that this is the prayer last night that he prayed for you. Because he has written this message while I'm in McDonald's. That's when he's replying these replies. Are you seeing the connection, you know? And the Spirit of God just ministers to me. You are covered. This is the Lord's doing. And I'm just so grateful. Even when we got here, we we're about to go back. We trekked all the way to the end of this bed. It's like almost 15, 20 minutes or 30 minutes walk from where we came from. Even the taxi was delaying. We we're almost one hour getting here. I mean, there are many things we're just fighting that we should go back, that this baptism shouldn't happen. Isn't it just amazing? You know, there's not enough funds in my account to pay for this taxi to get there. Uber is not in Kent, you know, to order Uber is not there. We have to go back, we have to stop the Uber transaction. We search and search, there's no other apps to, up, to apply to come here. What am I going to do? We have no cash on me. And they said they can take, um, you know, they only have taxis. We order the taxi. The taxi comes about 25 minutes late. This is like almost 11 a.m. So we're supposed to be here at 10 a.m. I 
I don't even know this place. So imagine all of these things countering this being here. You know, we're not locals and all of that. And I felt like, okay, Lord, maybe we'll have to book our ticket and find a way to go back to Dudley. He said, the taxi, wait, the taxi will come. And that same taxi I had booked came. And when she got here, the charges were not as bad as the order, the previous one I had booked. And we got here. And at the same gate she dropped us off. The Spirit of God said, walk towards this direction. I said, they're coming. And when I got towards the middle of them, my sons began again, they are whatever. They were excited with the whole beach thing. They want to, you know, just stay and enjoy. I'm like, we are here for a reason. I kept focus on the goal to baptism. When we got towards somewhere around the midway, I was like, okay, maybe we're on the wrong direction. Let me go the opposite side of the bay. The voice said, another voice said, go the opposite side. I was, this time I was crying. Yeah, I'm already crying. I'm like, okay, so I can't find anybody. There's no one here. I can't see any brother Marcus. I see nobody that I recognize from the, you know. Ah, Lord, is this how we came all the way here? You know, like how Moses said in the, you know, he brought us all, he brought them here to, to abandon them in the wilderness. You know, I just, as the Lord, I said, but the, oh, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Order my steps, Holy Spirit. He said, keep going on. I kept going on. And just like three minutes, I spotted his, um, his the teacher's head. I just, I said, this is the person I'm looking for. I said, Obama, I shouted at my son. This is the one who saw you. I said, Stan, watch, look down, that is him. He shouted, I said, oh, and that is how the testimony just came all to life. And I'm so overjoyed that I eventually got immersed because the Lord taught me that the word is not is not, is not really baptism. He said when I said immersed in water, there was something that erupts in my spirit. He said you are immersed. You're going to be immersed and you're going to be resurrected. You're going to come out a newborn. That you are going to be born again today. He said unless you are born again, you shall not see the kingdom of heaven. I mean, there is something that happens at that there's a transaction that takes place and that is what he didn't want me to miss and the battle was fierce to get here but I thank him the king he takes all the glory and the grace of patience and the teachings of endurance and long suffering that went through all of this is so worth it and I'm so 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 happy but Marcos thank you and everybody God bless you so much thank you for everything it felt comparing to the first time I was in the it really felt um, unique. Um, I came out light. My daughter said to me that as she came out of the water, all the sadness that she had, because we fought with sadness for a very long time with her, she said all that sadness has lifted up off her shoulders. And I praise Jehovah for that, because uh, as a parent, I think that's the biggest battle. Um, so I just feel light. I feel full of joy. Um, I'm so excited to see the journey that has just started today. Um, I'm finally alive um, in the kingdom and um, I just prayed uh, before I went into the woods and I just uh, asked the Father to use me for His glory, use me on this earth for His kingdom and I'm just so prepared for us to come. Um, so yeah, all praise and glory to Yehovah. Um, I'm just so happy to be called His daughter.